Hello, Herman here with another episode in the ClearPass workshop series where we will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless Active Directory and much more. And after a few requests on the commands, we finally got to the point where we start to do onboarding. So there were lots of requests and finally we got to the point. So that's good. But first, what is onboarding for those who don't know? So if we have an environment, a corporate environment, uh, we can push for our own machines through Active Directory group policies or through our mobile device management system. We can push the network settings and certificates uh, so people can uh, connect to the network in a secure way with .1x fully configured so people don't need to do anything. If you have gone through the hassle to uh, configure it all yourself manually, you know that not all users can do that. And what onboarding is, it will automate that onboarding process. So uh, getting the certificate, uh, configuring all the uh, settings that are needed in order to uh, securely connect to the corporate SSID. So that's what we are doing in uh, this part of the workshop. And in order to do so, we will go through a few steps. So first we need to make sure that we have a valid HTTPS certificate. If you don't have a valid HTTP certificate, stop and first uh, get one. And uh, in order to know that you have a valid certificate, uh, check the URL bar. If you don't see any errors here and it is securely, it's HTTPS here, uh, then you know you have a valid uh, HTTPS certificate. And if you don't know how to set it up, there's another uh, episode in this series uh, that will uh, is, is called uh, Installing the HTTPS Certificate. Um, just go there and see how we uh, did it for uh, for this uh, system. Then uh, what we are doing in this episode is we will be configuring a onboarding certificate authority, which is basically an optional component because there is a pre-set up uh, certificate authority coming uh, with the product. Uh, but it's pretty easy to set up your own one and uh, it will make it much easier for troubleshooting because uh, yeah, we can make uh, certificates uh, to to yeah, to expose uh, where they come from so we can see that it's our certificate authority that uh, generated those certificates. So we will do that. And then in the next episode, we will be creating uh, the onboarding settings and uh, the services. And finally, we will onboard a device. Um, so you can see how it all happens uh, together. So we have seen that we have a valid HPS certificate. So now we are uh, creating the new certificate authority. And in order to do so, we go here to the ClearPass guest or you go to the slash guest. Um, you've seen this uh, before. So we are in the guest part, uh, which is also the onboard part for uh, ClearPass. And uh, in order to create a new certificate authority, we go under onboard here to the certificate authorities. And there you can see that we indeed have one uh, certificate authority and we can just create a new one um, because uh, that's good and let's call this uh, the workshop certificate uh, yeah workshop uh, CA uh, we can put a description in here and uh, here we can select uh, yeah which kind of CA we want to do um, there are a few settings here um, if you don't know, if you're not fully sure, always pick the root CA here, which will create an isolated certificate authority with no trusts to any other certificate authorities. So this still seems to be a complex choice, but uh, just take the root CA because it will create an isolated certificate authority. So the certificates issued by this uh, onboarding CA are only valid to connect to the network. Um, if you create it as an intermediate or an imported CA uh, or a registration authority with an external CA, it's all possible, but realize that if you are issuing the certificates, um, they are trusted uh, within that other CA in the hierarchy as well. So in theory or in practice, you can create a certificate, client certificates that are trusted throughout the corporation, and it can uh, can it can uh, can result in uh, creating access that is not intentional. So, unless you are 
completely sure what you're doing, uh, pick the Routier here on, uh, on this place. Then you can uh, create uh, where you are. So let me go here for the Netherlands, uh, the state. So we can just change the names so they make sense or they get shorter. And let's put this here. So there are created two certificate authorities because some devices need a leveled certificate. So this will be the root CA and there will be uh, created an intermediate CA with this name. Um, and yeah, let's put our um, uh, help desk or security with our email address in here. Then here we can set the other information. So uh, I typically go for a 4096 bit uh, key. Uh, doesn't really matter uh, again. And here you can set the CA expiration. And uh, by default, it's set to 10 years, which should be enough. Or you can uh, yeah, just make it uh, 10,000 day, uh, days, which is uh, yeah, uh, almost uh, 30 years. Um, but just make sure that this uh, CA has a long uh, validity. So um, this is how we uh, set up the uh, CA. So one thing that we see here is that the OCSP URL, um, it's not the full URL. So we might need to change it. So we go into edit here. And uh, what we can do here is include the responder URL, which is by default this one, but we can override it and we can specify it here. And then uh, we can put here dot Aruba lab dot lock. And we can put it uh, on this. So then other systems uh, might be able to resolve this uh, URL as well. Um, if you only use this uh, within the ClearPass system, uh, you could also use as a best practice localhost here. So instead of putting the host name in here, you can put in localhost. So it will always do a, a local validation. Then we have another uh, setting here, which is the validity period. And uh, yeah, I typically put that uh, a bit higher as well. So put it on uh, for 50 days or so. So uh, if you want to renew the certificate every year, um, it's good to put the validity period uh, above that uh, period, because if the certificate is expired, uh, you can no longer connect to the network. So it makes sense to make the certificate valid a bit longer so people can connect to the network. And if you detect that they are over a year of use, you can redirect them and point them through the onboarding process again. So, um, yeah, and then here we can, um, uh, yeah, we can edit it and uh, now it looks uh, looks good. So there's a bug here that it doesn't show uh, the correct URL, but uh, if you go in, it is, uh, it is okay. So it's a small GUI bug. So this is how we set up the uh, onboarding CA. In the next video, we will be uh, setting up the configuration and all the policies. And uh, after that, we will show how to onboard a real client. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button below this video. Put your comments there and also subscribe to our channel so you will be notified if there are new videos live for you.